Hey, all right. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined later by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. Big day. This is episode number 1100 of the Mr. Excel podcast. And since I started at 101, this is our 1000th episode. Got a great question today uh, sent in by DRG. DRG uh, has discovered the county of function. Right, like you know, many of us have, and uh, about a week in to using the count if you say, okay, now I need to do count if with two conditions, and uh, wow, it just does not work. Uh, you know, so DRG tried this. Hey, we're gonna look through C6 to C100, and if it meets both of these conditions using the AND function, very clever. I I uh, applaud DRG for that. Unfortunately, that simply does not work. So now there's many different methods to solve this. I'm going to start off uh, first. Uh, we're going to use the sum product, and in sum product, I'm going to use two arrays. I'm going to uh, take two different arrays. The first one is going to be a Boolean array that looks through C6 to C100 to see if it's greater than or equal to our minimum value up here, the negative 0.7. So I close that first array, and then I do something that most people don't do. I use an asterisk, asterisk, and then a second Boolean array. This one, C6 to C100 is less than or equal to our maximum amount. Close that Boolean array and close the whole thing. Press not control shift enter, just enter and bam, we have the 25. What's going on? When we do the evaluate formula, you'll see at this first array, checking to see if everything is equal to uh, greater than or e equal to minus 0 0.7 that's going to evaluate to a whole bunch of trues and falses. And unfortunately, some product cannot deal with trues and falses. Usually we just give it a whole series of arrays separated by comma, but uh, some product doesn't know how to deal with that. Well, the miraculous thing is when we take the first array of trues and falses and multiply it by the second array of trues and falses, those all change to zeros and ones. And true times true is one, True times false or false times true is zero. So you see we end up with a whole series of zeros and ones here. And the only time we get a one is when both the first array and the second array are both true. So here the fourth number is a one, one, two, three, four. Yep, that is the first one that falls within the range. All right, so that's how it works. Um, that's my uh, uh, number one method. Let's send it over to Mike and see what Mike comes up with. Hey, thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, I'm going to use that same formula that Mr. Excel used, except for change two things. I copied his formula. I'm going to control V, and I'm going to change two things. Instead of multiplying, I'm going to use double negative. And instead of using just one array, I'm going to use two. So I'm going to highlight this, that multiplying, and put a comma. So now we have two arrays. As Mr. Excel pointed out, some product wouldn't know how to deal with the trues and falses. But watch this. The second thing we'll do is we'll put double negative, which can convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. So I'll put double negative there in front of the parentheses. The parentheses have all the trues and falses. And then a double negative here. Now, why the double negative instead of multiplying? It's faster. I used to uh, use multiplying a lot, and still do sometimes, but I kept reading at the Mr. Excel message board that double negative is faster. And if you time the formulas, especially big formulas, uh, it really is faster. So there we go. We have our double negative. We have our two arrays. Some product will take the ones and zeros, double negatives, trues and falses, ones and zeros. So we have two arrays of ones and zeros. It multiplies them. 1 times 1 is 0. Anything uh, 1 times 1 is 1, and anything else is 0. So we get the same number, 25. All right, I'm going to throw it back over to Mr. Excel. Cool, Mike, the double negative. I love that. OK, now we're going to go old school. I'm going to go back to a, a add in I used to use called the conditional sum wizard. And the conditional sum wizard would walk you through and ask you all these questions. And then it would build a formula sort of like this, equal if. And we go look see if all of our values there in C are greater than or equal to our minimum value. And if that's true, then we want to nest another if statement. If C2, C6 to C100 is less than or equal to our maximum value. All right. If both of those are true, then I want a 1, comma 1. Now, normally I'd put comma 0 here and then 
close parentheses another comma zero but in fact we can just close that first if statement we're going to get falses and close the second if statement all right now that's going to return an array of either ones or falses now of course i can't deal with a whole bunch of numbers here ones and falses all in this one cell so i have to do something a wrapper function uh, like sum that will take that array and sum it up now because this is an array formula what I used to call a CSE formula, uh, you have to hold down three keystrokes, control, shift, and enter, control, shift, enter, and there you have it. Back to Mike. Hey, how about this one? We'll do the same one as Mr. Excel's number one, except for instead of sum product, we'll use sum. Now, before I learned sum product, I used to do this a lot, and I still do it now because there's a keyboard shortcut for the sum function. Alt equals, and then we'll open parentheses, go down and get our trues and falses. We say, hey, that whole range there, greater than or equal to our lower value, close parentheses, and multiply. We'll get a bunch of trues and falses right there. <coughs> Another open parentheses, and then we'll go down and get our values again, control shift down arrow, and less than or equal to our lower value, close parentheses. Now, this is the sum function with sum product. You don't need control shift enter, but with the sum function, you need control shift enter. And there you go, 25. All right, back to Mr. Excel. Okay, so there's always many ways to do everything in Excel. This one's a stretch, but it's cool, so check it out. I have a VLOOKUP, but this isn't the usual version of VLOOKUP with a comma false at the end. It's the comma true version, uh, which says that we have a range. So in other words, go look for this minus 0 0.16 and find the value that is just smaller than that. So I put an impossibly small number here and put zero, and then my min here and put a one, and then a number just smaller than my max and put a zero. And what happens with that VLOOKUP, we put comma true at the end, is we're going to get either zeros or ones all the way down. And now I just need a cool way to add up those zeros and ones. But unfortunately, VLOOKUP will not return an array. There's an, other, an old, old, old function that's just in there for compatibility, they say, called lookup and this is a funny function funny because uh, first of all we don't get to specify which column we want it automatically gives us the last column now uh, we don't get to specify true or false like vlookup it always just assumes true and the other really weird thing is either going to do vlookup or hlookup depending on if the array is wider or taller uh, bizarre bizarre function but it turns out that lookup as old as it is will return an array so it's exactly what we need here uh, so let's come up with equal sum and then look up. Go look up all of these values here in our array over here. And I'm going to do something really cool that uh, I learned from Mike. I'm going to highlight that and press F9. So that way the array is embedded right in the table. Close the lookup, close the sum, and then Control Shift Enter. There's my 25. If you don't want Control Shift Enter, change the sum to sum product and just enter and 25 so there's two more mike back to you wow the lookup now that is an awesome formula hey i'm going to go back uh straight to a straight 2007 a solution here count ifs this will allow us we put our same range and we have a criteria the comparative operator has to be in double quotes so we'll say greater than or equal to n double quote ampersand shift 7 and get our lower value comma our same range again for criteria range 2 comma and then it, we can put more criteria with the s version of count ifs and then we'll do double quote less than or equal to double quote ampersand and the upper value now look at this the beauty of this function is it is faster calculating than all of the other ones 25 still another method if we come over here and go back to the original question, hey, how do we use AND? We'll just add a column and say, are the two conditions met? AND, we'll say first, is this greater than or equal to this? I'm use my F4 key. Then we'll say second condition is that, less than or equal to this one, and use my F4 key. Copy that all the way down. When both conditions are met, it'll give us a true. Now we just come up here, use sum product, 
double negative to convert the trues and falses. But watch this. We can just highlight that whole column. We don't need to put parentheses around that range like we did in some of our earlier formulas, because there's no comparative operator up here. That's down here. These are all trues and falses. So you just boom, right in front of it. You could also do a multiplying. And multiplying, you could put in the front or the back. And then, of course, you could do your sum with a double negative and Control Shift Enter. All right, uh, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, all right, there you go. Several different solutions to how to do count if. Uh, when we have two conditions, I want to thank Mike and I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun.